Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1028. You've been warned. Hello, my Nakamotachi, this is Joy Girl, and as promised, let's talk about the potential future developments we could see as a result of the Marines coming to Wano. In our last video, we discussed who would be the figures to lead the attempt to take over Wano in the event that Kaido falls in this arc. The world government successfully annexing Wano isn't something that I see happening, because the story of Momonosuke leading his country and the people of Wano reclaiming their homeland is such a big part of the arc's narrative that it would feel like such a complete waste and anticlimactic if these victories weren't achieved. Of course, though, that's just my opinions and Oda may have other plans. And if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on One Piece in general, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. But sticking to that idea and my belief of the world government being unsuccessful in their attempt, then an opposition is required to halt the world government's plan. And in this video, I'd like to share with you guys my thoughts on the possible candidates for this job. And let me start with the world government themselves. And yes, you heard that right, because the world government retreating is a scenario that could play out. After all, the world government isn't completely set on mindlessly attacking Wano. No, the world government's plan is subject to the condition that if Kaido loses the war, and only then should the plan go ahead. And of course, that is largely due to the fearsome reputation of Kaido's, which makes it very understandable that the Marines are taking careful consideration with their approach and wouldn't want to challenge Kaido himself. So with that in mind, what if the world government feels that there is perhaps another more dangerous threat ahead of them? Say, the guy who beat the guy that they're afraid to fight. Then an order to retreat could become a likely scenario. I'm not saying Luffy physically taking the world government fleet alone is one that they should be scared of, but more so of Luffy's ability to inspire people. Luffy leading the remaining survivors and able fighters of the alliance consisting of powerful pirates and samurais is not something that the world government should take lightly. But in saying that, Luffy having the strength to fight in another war is also not something that I see happening after his matchup against Kaido. Again, narrative-wise, it wouldn't bode well for Kaido's character and status as a Yonko if Luffy could move move on relatively quickly and easily after battling the strongest creature in the world. So I say that the Wano arc will see another parallel to Thriller Bark and that Luffy, like after his fight with Moria, will end up completely exhausted after his fight against Kaido. And if that is the case, then we're going to need some much needed help to ensure our straw hat captain survives this war and sees the light of the next arc, which is essentially guaranteed he is the main character after all. There are obvious candidates, of course. There are already a number of powerful combatants present on Onigashima with some, whilst having great showings, still left you wanting to see more of them. Marco, for example, whilst having a brief clash with Big Mom and holding off King and Queen simultaneously, it still felt like Marco could do more as one of the biggest names in this arc, and since the theory of Marco being the pheasant of the Momotaro tale now seems unlikely, having the role to lead the alliance against the world government to defend Wano could be a nice way for us to see more from the late Whitebeard's first commander. There are also the Straw Hats themselves who could protect Robin, as they've done so in the past, and a common plot development that I always hear is Brooke having a big role in keeping Robin safe. This would actually be a greatly appreciated scenario from yours truly, not because of my straw hat bias, but also because the last time the crew saved Robin was prior to Brooke joining the crew, and how awesome would it be if in this arc, the straw hats who were not yet members during the Water 7 saga gets the chance to protect our archaeologist. And yes, that includes Jinbei too, since he had a much easier time than anyone in his matchup against Who's Who, plus he can do more of this to ships. Usopp and Chopper are also two straw hats who haven't gotten a complete one-on-one -on -one fight in this arc, so perhaps they could get their chance here. And if we're expecting Luffy to be exhausted after his fight with Kaido, and given the uncertainty of when Zoro's miracle drug will wear off, the next natural candidate to lead the crew is Sanji. Sanji just received a power-up that will ensure he will be in good health as long as he keeps surviving from here on out. And with so many parallels and foreshadowing hints to Wano in Thriller Bark, wouldn't it be awesome to see Sanji's threat that he will one day be become the biggest headache for the world government to get a payoff in this arc. I see no better opportunity of becoming that nuisance than right here and now, and it would also fit with Sanji's usual espionage role that he's played in previous arcs by fulfilling something that greatly helps the cause of the overall objective. One scenario is suiting up with his raid suit and sneaking into the marine ships to take them down one by one. Sanji being the straw hat to protect Robin would actually be such a layered plot development. Not only would this be him paying back Robin for coming to his aid earlier against Black Maria, but also in that scene at Zoe when Robin declared she had strong friends who would protect her, Sanji was the only member of the crew not present at the time, and therefore the only one who didn't join in when the crew enthusiastically agreed to protect Robin. 
So then it would be an ironically fitting scenario if Sanji is the one to come to Robin's rescue. Moving on from the Straw Hats but sticking to characters that are already part of the arc, the Big Mom pirates also come to mind. Big Mom's children have been trying to get to Wano only to be kicked down on multiple occasions and this seemingly random gag could have a surprising payoff should the Big Mom pirates have a run-in with the world government fleet. In an ironic fashion, the Big Mom pirates may become the gatekeepers of Wano. And maybe it's just because of film Z but if we're talking irony, then I could also see a defeated Kaido dying as a true pirate to take on the whole marines himself, with a nice parallel to Whitebeard's final moments which is what Kaido seems to have wanted all along. And other potential scenarios have been further raised by recent developments. Based on Yamato's last movements and plans in chapter 1028, having Yamato drop the bombs on those marine ships is another idea I've seen floating around, or maybe even just simply destroying Onigashima and letting the falling debris drive the marines off. But considering the nature of this manga, these options may not seem dramatic enough. And combined with the loads of interesting information and range of characters we've witnessed prior to the Wano arc and during its intermissions, it makes sense why fans are thinking, hoping, and expecting other forces to arrive and help in fending off the world government. So making these options a little more exciting, because looking outside of Onigashima, there are our outside forces who could have reasons to become involved in the battle. In fact, the potential for all the different figures who could assist the alliance, considering the involvement of one Nico Robin, raises an amazing collection of very intriguing characters. For one, there's the popular talk of the revolutionaries coming to Wano, and this one has a great possibility of happening. Apart from their connections to Robin, which by the way, they may have her Vivra card and therefore could sense that she's in danger, she's considered the light of the revolution after all, a comment which I don't believe we've yet to see fully developed, but there's also the business of the drunken iron ore that the revolutionary army is interested in. And whilst it's not confirmed that Wano houses this material, it's not too impossible to think that it does. The drunken iron ore is said to be used to build weapons and coincidentally the Wano country has weapons factories which remains unexplored in the story. It may just be that Wano is indeed rich with this material and could be one of the reasons why Kaido himself chose Wano as his base. Drunken iron ore for a drunken man? I don't imagine that the revolutionary army will just allow the world government, the very unit that they oppose, to just take over a country able to mass produce weapons. Not going to Wano to oppose the world government from gaining such power would be counterproductive to their main objective. This could also result in a nice tie-up of some existing mysteries such as what happened to Sabo if the Marines and Revolutionary Army have a confrontation at Wano. Another group who would be keen to aid the Straw Hats and protect Robin is the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Whether I'm expecting to see the Grand Fleet show up at Wano is a question I've been asked multiple times now and whilst I personally do think that they're an end of series final war player, it is possible that they'll come to Wano. Going a step further than the Revolutionary Army who may have Robin's Viver card, each crew of the Grand Fleet definitely has Luffy's Viva card and if they find that he's in danger, they may make their way to Wano only to protect Robin instead. I've also heard Blackbeard's name come up in these discussions and that Blackbeard may attempt to take Nico Robin for her ability to read the Polnoglyph. The panel that's usually cited for this reason is when Blackbeard appeared to be wanting something that the world government wanted which would certainly fit the scenario that we have here. The world government wants Robin and Blackbeard needs Robin for his own cause. Personally, this is a theory that I don't want to see yet because Blackbeard being a part of the direct conflict against the Straw Hats also feels still too early in the story for me. But this doesn't mean that his crew can't be involved in the conflict because one of the Blackbeard pirates could make an appearance which would make sense. Kuzan, for example, who is now confirmed to have allied with Blackbeard, has some connections with Robin and the last time we saw the encounter between these two, Kuzan, whose ideals were at times in opposition to the world government even whilst he was a marine admiral, was kind enough to not take action and allowed Robin to sail with the Straw Hats. Also, Kuzan is someone who has the power to hold off an entire fleet at sea. Moving on to another marine whose morals at times seem to come at odds with the world government, Smoker is another name I also see come up during these discussions, whom I didn't mention in the last video because should they show up, I expect them to be on the alliance's side. But the last time we saw Smoker, he was on his way to Vegapunk, so he could indeed arrive at Wano along with the scientists, also along with Kizaro and Sentomaro who could also show up with our mystery scientists, which is something I also missed during our last video. There is also the possible arrival of the rest of sword. With one member of this secret world government force already on Onigashima, it's possible that the rest of sword may also show up. And if we were to follow the highly speculated view that sword and CP0 seem to be oppositional factions within the world government, we may see these two world government secret agents fight on opposing sides. Another mystery figure who could also be a possibility is Shanks. Though I see Shanks coming only as more likely if we see Blackbeard arrive, which I already said I'm not too sure about, but Shanks coming to intervene at crucial moments is something 
something we've seen before. There's also the intriguing comment that Oda made in Jump Festa that a red-haired man will make a move in 2021. And though the time frame may now be slightly off due to delays in schedule for unforeseen factors, it is still possible we'll see this comment play out relatively soon. It's even possible that multiple characters or groups will show up, catapulting us into the next mega saga. Whilst, like I've said on multiple occasions, that I do believe we'll see the Alliance's victories over Kaido, it's possible that after the huge feast to celebrate Wano's independence and opening of its borders, we'll be quickly thrusted into another great conflict. Given Wano's tragic history, I do still maintain that I wouldn't like to see the Marines take over afterwards, but the development could be that we continue this new conflict elsewhere away from Wano. This could be the way that Hawkins' prediction of Luffy's survival rate for in a month's time comes into play. Rather than being an indication of Luffy's ability to survive the Onigashima raid, it may have been the next great threat after Kaido. This would then certainly fall in line with the anime director's comments about the great enemy following Kaido. And when you think about it this way, there really are so many different possible routes Oda could take us. By dropping hints and details here and there, Oda's planted so many seeds for so many different potential storylines that any one or more of the candidates that we've mentioned in this discussion could have a fair shot of showing up at Wano and it would still make sense. If you really let your imagination fly, we could even consider some more interesting candidates who could show up to protect Robin and retrospectively say that there are relevant connections and foreshadowing hints that were seeded all along. Such as this fun cover page of Luffy's Impel Down crew who are in Wano-esque Japanese outfits, all of whom we could connect to Robin. And more than anything, I think it is a testament to the intricate story that Oda has crafted. But now that you've heard my thoughts, please share yours by leaving a comment below and don't forget to like and share the video. Please subscribe to this channel for more One Piece discussions and you can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server. Don't forget that becoming a patron member will give you special roles and powers within that server. And on that note, thank you to our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.